Welcome back to Alex News Now. I'm Nick Z. We got to go back to what we were talking about at the top of the show, and that is the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. Now, since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, unfortunately, millions of Ukrainians have been displaced, and not only internally, but abroad as well. In fact, the Biden administration plans to welcome up to 100,000 Ukrainians and others fleeing the country into the United States. Their entry will be through a range of different pathways. That includes, just to name a few, the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program, non-immigrant and immigrant visas, as well as other means. So to help us unpack all of this and talk about some of those other means, we have Alta Gracia Pierre Outerbridge, immigration attorney and founder and owner of New York City-based law firm Outerbridge Law. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on um, and super important to have you on right now. Um, so I, I, I just want to ask you about something um, that I that I found interesting. The administration, the Biden administration has been under scrutiny because many refugees, including those coming from Ukraine, have been prevented from entering the United States. And in some cases, they've been detained at the southern border. So talk to us about that. I mean, I remember when, you know, terrible things were happening in Haiti. We had some Haitians crossing over from there, but that's closer to Mexico. So how are Ukrainians ending up at our southern border? Are they flying from Ukraine directly to Mexico? Do we have that kind of information? No, no one really ever has that kind of information mm. because people are traveling using any means necessary. And those means are not official because if they were, uh, they would be stopped right, right on their track. So people are using whatever they can, probably partly some flying, partly some walking, believe it or not, right? partly some land transportation, partly some whatever they need to actually get there. In terms of um, the paths, as you said, the paths are, there are many, many paths to them getting here, yeah. to the Ukrainians uh, getting here during this um, really bad time for them. And I mean, if you wish, I could discuss them. Yeah, please um, break it down, sure. break it down for us. What do we know so far? So the usual has always been to have an immediate family member here. If you have an immediate family member, a spouse, a parent, right? Someone who's an immediate immediate family, usually it's a spouse, right? Or a parent or a child over 21, then you are considered an immediate relative, which means that you're already ahead, whatever nationality you are, you're already ahead of the game because you have an immediate family member who wishes to get you here on an immigrant basis. Uh, there also remains non-immigrant basis for getting here, right, and, 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 and obtaining safety. Um, that still remains student visas, still remains non-visitors um, visas that last for three to six months, right? Uh, applying for those, getting an interview and applying for those and coming here and renewing those visas. Um, also, there remains um, the option of humanitarian parole, which allows you to remain here for a year. Um, on the basis that where you are from is um, the country where you are from is suffering a humanitarian crisis, right? Or that you personally are suffering a humanitarian crisis. Folks usually use it when parents are dying, uh, when relatives are dying. They usually seek that visa in order to come to um, tend to their family member. Um, uh, the Ukrainians have been found to have a humanitarian crisis, uh, crisis as a as a group. So humanitarian parole still um, is an option for them. Uh, unfortunately, only it only lasts a year. However, they can work during that time, right? Um, so it's 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 a uh, temporary resettlement. Oh, it's the only temporary. Permanent re Correct. Oh, okay. okay the only yeah. permanent would be an immigrant visa. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. Go ahead. You can finish. The only permanent would be actually be a, a, an immigrant visa or obtaining refugee status, which is a rather complicated process, which permits you to remain here ad infinitum. I understand. I, I would assume most would want to return back to their homes. Nobody's, you know, uh, everyone's basically fleeing more or less for the same reasons here. Um, now, the United States, I believe, all has an annual, like, a cap of how many refugees they could take in. And, and, and now, all of a sudden, we have this crisis that's kind of arose. Um, and so that's 100,000 people there. Will that affect uh, the rules that were already in place for how many refugees the United States? I mean, is that added on? Is that going to take away from that original cap? How, how is this number of 100,000 people from Ukraine specifically going to play in to our previous, you know, um, laws that were that were in place before? Yes, you're right. So this would absolutely be an exception, right? Okay. However, um, it, it's always it always becomes a political issue as to which exceptions are made. Folks will will uh, will often say, "What about the Hondurans? What about the Haitians? What mm. about the other groups that have had humanitarian crises for for a while?" So it's an exception. It remains to be seen how it will be applied 
but it is an exception. And the U.S. would not be the only country that grants refugee status. We know the, that the U.N. has asked that any countries open their arms to uh, provide refugee status for the Ukrainians. And what we have been, what we has been told is that Ukrainians will try to remain as close to their home as possible. So the 100,000 may be enough, right? But um, yes, it's always a political issue as to how long, um, how many people and what categories, what, what group of people is allowed um, the largest numbers. Sure, so I guess going off of what you said, though, I mean, you, you kind of touched on what my next question was. I mean, if you're somebody who's in the United States, who's waiting for their green card or, or you know, the more permanent papers, um, and they're not from Ukraine, they've been here a few years waiting for that process, because as I'm sure they know, it's a very lengthy process for some people. This new influx of people that we're taking in, would it necessarily affect that in any way? No, I wouldn't say that. To the extent that you are uh, applying as an immediate family member, which is the sweet spot, right, of immigration, being sure. an immediate family member of a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, then you're, you're, you're already a prioritized category. I think what we would be looking for is non-immigrant visas, right? Non-immigrant visas, different categories that would be that may be flux, right? But the sweet spot that I mean, it's just adding years, right? But you would be waiting years anyway. The sweet spot has always been an um, the, the no waiting spot has always been having an immediate family member. Malta Gracia Pierre, Outerbridge. Thank you so much for coming on the show once again. We appreciate your insight. We we'll right back after.